Hey everyone! So if you've been watching the channel in the last few weeks, you probably saw this video coming. As you know, my second sorcery-focused run of Elden Ring ended, and as you know, I have had almost the exact same trajectory on my second playthrough with how much I enjoyed this game as I did on my first playthrough. Since then, I've done a lot of thinking on Elden Ring and also a lot of thinking on how to put all of my thoughts into a video. This is the result. Please note, as it says in the title, this is a critique of the game. There is and will always be a lot that I absolutely love about this game. In many aspects, Elden Ring is the best game in the series. When it comes to dungeons, weapon variety, build variety, uh, boss design, all of that. Elden Ring flies miles above most other AAA games because we actually received a completed product on launch and didn't have to wait like 8 months for the game to be actually fixed to a playable level. The highs of Elden Ring cannot be taken away from it. But as I said at the beginning, I think it's important to look at all media products critically and that's what we are going to be talking about today. So if you do enjoy this video, and you do want to see more of this type of content, please be sure to like this video, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications as well. I welcome all opinions, whether you agree or disagree with me. Unleash on me if you think that I am completely wrong here. I don't mind. I think to some of my feelings on Elden Ring, I have to go back to what I ended my last review on. That I'm not sure the direction FromSoft seemed to be taking this series when it comes to world combat boss and enemy design from a gameplay perspective is necessarily for me. This feeling lingered throughout many moments of my second playthrough, which I mostly managed to ignore, since I was playing an OP in the build and I could basically brute force myself through most encounters. It was only after the mountain top and the last third of the game that most of the thoughts in this video really came to fruition in my head. First of all, let's discuss a little bit about the open world. Honestly, when Elden Ring was announced, I thought, great, open world Souls game, this is gonna be a done deal for me. There's gonna be infinite replayability here. Disappointingly, however, Elden Ring is not an infinitely replayable Souls game. In fact, right now, the idea of starting a third or fourth playthrough is not something I would consider. Elden Ring's main hook was supposed to be the journey and discovering things, but after several runs you start to realize there is an incredible amount of boring, samey looking dungeons with reskinned enemies and tons of reused bosses. And most of the repeated content is a result of the fact that this game is simply too big, there is no other way to say it. An open world Souls game is a great idea. I just wish FromSoft would have tested the waters with a smaller world at first before jumping into the extremes of Elden Ring. Elden Ring is huge, way bigger than many other open world RPGs and I think it's clear from the amount of truly original content here that FromSoft did not have the capacity to actually fill the huge open world with meaningful enemy encounters, bosses and activities and had to resort to copy and pasting, which is a trend many open world games unfortunately share. The issue of repeated bosses and content is one of the most consistent criticisms I see of Elden Ring. Despite what you think of all other aspects of combat, enemy design, etc., the repeated bosses I feel like are something that truly brings the entire community together, and almost the entire community agrees that it is a bit BS. So honestly, outside of the legacy dungeons which truly are a highlight and are some of the best areas in the series, Neither the open world, its enemies, nor its bosses offer enough excitement for me to continue into multiple playthroughs. One of the most consistent feelings I had throughout my second playthrough, and by the way, I have started a third playthrough as well, off screen, which I abandoned, is that a lot of the times this game doesn't seem to be respecting your time. You know, what's the point of engaging with such a huge open world if most of what you're going to be seeing is repeated content. This is compounded by many other issues as well, such as enemies and field bosses giving way too little runes and being way too easy to run past. It just doesn't feel like I need to engage with the open world. The open world is there as something just to sprint through or something to get bogged down in, but when you get bogged down in, you do not actually get enough satisfaction to keep getting bogged down. 
there isn't enough incentive to explore, especially once you know where everything is that you want for a particular build. A lot of why I think Elden Ring does work for casual fans is that most people play these games once. I see so many people saying Elden Ring was a one and done game for them and I think it would be really interesting to look at some statistics on how many people did second and third playthroughs of this game versus other Souls games. I can only speak anecdotally but I feel like the number would be a lot lower. On multiple runs the open world absolutely loses its magic and becomes a lot more of a hindrance than it should be. Besides the open world my other major issue with Elden Ring is the same thing that I mentioned in my last review and that would be the bosses and boss combat design. I feel like by always trying to ramp up the difficulty in every Souls installment, because that's the selling point of the series, FromSoft have really lost sight of what makes Souls combat and bosses interesting, fun and challenging. So many of this game's bosses fall into a category of face roll them or be face rolled. They feel like Sekiro or Bloodborne bosses in terms of aggression, but without any sort of suitable complementary system like rallying or parries to counter said aggression. This is something that's been creeping into the series for a while now. Many of Dark Souls 3's DLC bosses were said by the community to be Bloodborne bosses stuck in the wrong game, but even Dark Souls 3 had compensating mechanics, like the insanely fast healing that was implemented in that game. And you might be saying, well, it's actually the summon system. That's Elden Ring's version of the rally or parry system. Just summon and you will be fine. I've seen this mentioned many times and honestly I couldn't disagree more. I don't want to go into too much around summons because I covered them extensively in my first review, but Spirit Ashes are not a complementary mechanic to the core of Elden Ring. Rallying and Sekiro's parry system are woven into the core of combat in those games. Summoning feels like a weird tacked on addition. I still absolutely hold the opinion that From simply had no idea how to properly balance summons and how to properly balance bosses to summons. The AI of bosses, as in any Souls game, still has no idea how to deal with multiple opponents. Before, in other games, it would struggle against a single NPC phantom. Now the AI has to contend with you, an NPC phantom, and potentially a pack of five great shield skeletons. It does not know what to do, who to prioritize, who to focus its aggro on. I've consistently seen situations over my playthroughs where bosses suddenly switch their aggro from me to my great shield bros, even when they had a clear opening to damage me. I could agree with Spirit Ashes being the main mechanic around which Elden Ring's combat was designed, if it actually was the case. However, it feels like FromSoft made no attempt to make any tweaks to their standard AI, and instead to balance things out just decided to crank the boss damage up to 11. And let's focus on the bosses a little bit, because I still think they are the best vessel to discuss some of the critiques I have of Elden Ring. I want to make it clear, I don't hate all the bosses in this game. On the contrary, there are some fantastic fights throughout. I still really like Godric, Godric makes a great first impression, Radan is epic and cinematic and I think now with the balance he's actually in a good place. I still enjoy Morgoth, people have issues with Morgoth, I personally do not. The same with Godfrey, uh, I still really really enjoy fighting Godfrey. And the Godskins on their own are fantastic. These are all excellent bosses, both from a visual, lore and gameplay standpoint and I really enjoy the challenge that these bosses bring. However, a lot of these fantastic bosses are overshadowed by the frustrating ones. And man, there are so many frustrating bosses in this game, with them notoriously being more common late game. So let's cover a few of them. Let's talk about the dragons first. It's truly a shame that the dragon fights, which were always the highlights of previous games, are relegated to field bosses in this game. Aside from Plasudesex, the dragon fights get extremely tiresome very quickly. Essentially, dragons, as with many other content in this game, is reskin and control C, control V city. And I don't know why FromSoft chose to relegate their highlight enemies into basic color swap jobbers. By the time you get to Borealis of the Freezing Fog, you're either going to run past him 
or just try to blast him as quickly as possible for the runes that he gives. But what it certainly won't feel like is a special encounter. Aside from losing their magic, dragons also expose one of the faults of open world bosses, especially large ones, in that they tend to get stuck on the level geometry. This is especially annoying with the Scarlet Rod Dragon, I don't remember his name, who regularly gets caught on the cliffs near his arena. This combined with the unclear hitboxes of breath attacks can lead to many frustrating deaths. Dragons also expose another huge issue I personally have with Elden Ring, which I will discuss later on as well, but I think it's really obvious with the dragons, and that is the camera. I've talked about the camera briefly on review 1, but I still felt it was a huge issue on playthrough 2. Souls bosses have gotten flashier, larger and faster as the series went on, while the camera system being used is the same as it was in 2009's Demon Souls. The camera simply isn't equipped to deal with a giant dragon that flies around at lightning speed and spews massive AoE particle effects across the area. I've gotten hit so many times by attacks that came from off screen or moves that I couldn't even judge the distance on because the camera was so badly positioned I couldn't see them. I know the classic answer to the Souls camera problem is always, well it's meant to be like that, it's part of the difficulty, you just have to learn how to work around it. At this point I absolutely hate this argument. I can take many things being quote unquote obtuse on purpose in Souls games, like not having quest markers, you know, mechanics not being explained properly, not knowing where to go, these are all okay and really do add to the vibe of the series and to the overall difficulty. But having a terrible camera system is not something I can excuse. In the first few games in the series I was like, okay, yeah, you know, FromSoft, they're not a huge developer, uh, they've been making like different kind of games, they're still learning. But we are now seven games into the series. When FromSoft is as close to a AAA studio as you could be, having a terrible camera is not an acceptable excuse. It's especially frustrating because Sekiro basically fixed this issue by zooming out and positioning the camera a little bit differently. It actually felt like there were meaningful improvements in the camera when it came to the larger bosses. It's a bit baffling to me that this, in my honest opinion, fairly easy solution wasn't implemented in Elden Ring. Oh, and speaking of the terrible camera, let's go on to boss number two, the fire giant. I actually think I got fairly lucky on my first fire giant fight. I beat him, I think, on my third try. And that made me always wonder why people always said that this was one of the most frustrating and worst bosses in Elden Ring. After playthrough two, I fully agree. Fire giant is the worst boss by far in Elden Ring, especially considering that he is not even a fight you can skip. And I can't believe a fight this clunky made it into such a major significant story roadblock in the game. Let's look at this fight in detail. First, the previously mentioned camera issue is perhaps the worst in this fight. The fire giant is absolutely enormous, to the point that his foot fills up the entire screen when you are near it. This makes it nearly impossible to see when an attack is coming, it's actually not possible to look at what he's winding up for. Therefore you will be hit a lot. Which leads to the second point, that the HP damage balance on this guy is completely whacked. Think about it, the fire giant has 43,263 HP. On my most recent run using a melee weapon and hitting his weak spot, I was dealing around 5 to 600 damage per hit on him during phase 2. Okay, so you might say, yeah, yeah, it's an endurance fight, those have existed in the series before. And while I fully agree, no endurance fight in any Souls game ever had the opponent deal this much damage. The Fire Giant at level 100 with 42 Vigor could pretty much one-shot me with any of his attacks. Now this is a boss fight that takes on average at least 5 to 6 minutes, where any attack at any time could immediately end your attempt. And as an added bonus, any of these attacks can come from off-screen because of the terrible camera. It just doesn't feel like a fight that was designed with thought, unlike many other great Souls bosses. It does not feel like the Fire Giant respects your time. It specifically feels like a roadblock set up not to provide an actual challenge, but to annoy and frustrate you. And add to all this, something I haven't even mentioned, is the fact that the Fire Giant's arena has uneven ground 
and the obstacles he can get stuck on. This is a huge boss with weird hitboxes. Just this once, I think everybody would have accepted if the arena was an actual arena with flat ground. Oh, and if we're talking about damage, we have to cover Malekith. Malekith is a perfect embodiment of the late game boss design of Elden Ring. Sure, he does not have a lot of HP, but man is his damage completely whacked on phase 2. There were very few instances where I could take more than one hit from him, and several of his attacks would have easily one-shot me if I didn't have spirit ashes to aggro him. But you may ask why insane damage is necessarily a bad thing on bosses? Well, I think it leads to two things which Elden Ring fully embodies which are not necessarily the greatest. Number one, it encourages you to cheese bosses, especially in the late game. Again, this is anecdotal, but if you look at the videos and threads from previous Souls games, the general vibe around difficult bosses was sharing tips. Do this, dodge to the right, with this attack, dodge backwards with that attack, this weapon is good against him, this type of damage, that's what he's weak to, etc, etc, etc. For Elden Ring, I can guarantee you, again, just speaking from general experience here, that one of the first comments you see when someone asks for help with a difficult boss is just get rivers of blood, bro, or just pick up Moonveil, get it to level whatever it goes to, or just use Mimic Tear, plus 10. Now obviously any game is always gonna have OP tactics and OP gear, OP weapons, etc. But Elden Ring almost specifically seems to push you towards being cheap. I was cheap when it came to fighting Malekith on playthrough 2. Yes, it did not feel satisfying getting my shield bros out and aggroing him completely and blasting him with magic, but it sure as hell felt better than if I had struggled against him for like 2 hours. With the damage late game enemies and bosses deal, people are pushed towards using the top percent of OP weapons and builds, way more so than in any other previous Souls game. I mean, the difference in using summons and magic versus Malekith, or using rivers of blood versus using something like a slow great hammer with no summons is insane. It's way bigger of a gap than if you say chose to fight Ornstein and Small with a dagger or with something like a longsword. It feels like the damage bosses deal and their moveset handicaps certain builds and weapons so much that people just want to get as OP as possible and steamroll a boss. I think it's a common thread of complaint with Elden Ring that slower weapons seem to be pretty heavily nerfed compared to other games. That is because slower weapons in previous Souls games always relied on you sometimes exchanging damage. With the insane amount of damage dealt by bosses in this game and how aggressive they are, trading damage is basically not possible. Not to mention that any sort of poise mechanic is essentially absent in Elden Ring, so a lot of the times you won't even be able to tank through attacks with your heavy weapon. The second point I want to cover is that when late game bosses and enemies do this much damage, it completely devalues the point of leveling up Vigor. Vigor is in a weird position in Elden Ring in that it's partially pretty much mandatory for you to be able to survive more than one attack against certain bosses and enemies, but at the same time the stat doesn't actually give you any meaningful benefits either. In previous From Software games, other than Sekiro of course, you always had a choice of putting stats into Vigor to make yourself be able to take more hits. Of course this came at the expense of not being able to wield a heavier weapon because the points that would have went into that went into Vigor. But it could mean that even a less skilled player could take 4 maybe even 5 hits from a boss and not die using proper rings and armor. You invested in Vigor for survivability, that was the point of Vigor. In Elden Ring, if you don't have 50 Vig by the mountaintop, you are going to have an absolutely miserable time. It feels less like a stat and more like a mandatory investment, which is exactly why the adaptability system failed in Dark Souls 2, because it felt like something that was mandatory to level up, to not handicap yourself completely with how you played the game. If FromSoft are gonna go in this direction where enemy damage scales so heavily with where you are in the game, I'd almost say it's better to have Sekiro's system where bosses level up your HP. At least in that context, the enemy scaling makes a little more sense. I could probably sit here and discuss this game for hours on end. And again, people always get this idea that when somebody criticizes a piece of media, they must hate it. 
To make it clear again, I do not hate Elden Ring. I've had an immense amount of fun in both of my playthroughs. I have a ton of problems and issues with some of the other FromSoft games as well, such as Dark Souls 2, yet I still replay that game every couple of years. It's probably going to be something similar with Elden Ring. Occasionally I'll get the urge to return to this game and blast through it and I'm probably gonna have a great time. However, I cannot shake the feelings and issues I have with the core design philosophies of many aspects of Elden Ring. I do genuinely think that FromSoft have this idea that every game must be more difficult than the last. But difficulty can only be pushed so far. I really wonder what this game's DLCs are gonna have in store, because what else is possible at this point? More importantly, how can any boss be more difficult than Melania and still be fair? Because, you know, I could make any fight even harder. You know, I could take Melania, multiply her, have two of them and give them double HP. Sure, that would be objectively more difficult, but is that type of difficulty really why people started playing FromSoft games? I think we are already seeing the community shift. Elden Ring is much more about finding the exploits. How can I get the most OP weapon, summon or spell as quickly as possible and get this boss defeated as soon as I can? There are always going to be insanely skilled players who can beat every enemy, every boss, naked, level 1 with, I don't know, like a reinforced club. But I have a feeling that eventually the casuals, and I use this in the non-derogatory term, and the in-between skilled players like me will have no choice but to go OP or experience immense frustration. I'm sure there is a middle road here in terms of balance somewhere. But the question is, what is it? And now that the Elden Ring box is open and this game is so immensely successful, will we ever actually get there?